What's up guys, Andrew here. This is my full review on the Lenovo IdeaPad 500. This is an all-new line for Lenovo aimed at consumers that want a 15-inch notebook with decent power and value. This is kind of like the cheaper version of the Lenovo Z51 I reviewed a while back. So let's break down the specs. You're getting an AMD A10-8700P, a 15.6-inch 1080p panel, 1TB drive, 8 gigs of RAM, and the retail price of this notebook is $429. However, I did get it on sale at Best Buy for $379, so keep an eye on those sales. The design is made mostly out of plastic and it feels pretty durable. The weight comes in at 5.06 pounds and the stickest point is 0.97 inches. The bottom base is made out of plastic and it can be removed for future upgrades. The interior's palm rest is made out of this brushed metal finish and it feels pretty rigid. And then there's plastic surrounding the display. Basically, this is identical to the Lenovo Z51 I reviewed a while back. One of the design aesthetics on this notebook that I'm not really a fan of is this big hump right here. It's for the battery pack and I wish Lenovo could have squeezed it inside instead of putting it towards the back. There is very minimal flex towards the top of the notebook and that's a good thing considering its price range. However, the keyboard flex is terrible. Even with minimal pressure, you can see it flexing. Here are the ports on the left side of the notebook. You got your charging port, exhaust vents, VGA port, Ethernet adapter, full-size HDMI, two USB 3s, and a one-key recovery pin. On the right side, you got your headset microphone jack combo, USB 2, and SD card reader. Let's see how far it sticks out. Looks like a little more than a quarter. Here you got your DVD drive and your security lock slot. I was quite surprised to find a notebook for under $400 with a 1080p screen. The color accuracy is very poor, but the text is crisp and sharp. The Spider 4 Pro Color Render had an embarrassing score of 63% for the sRGB and 48% for the Adobe RGB. The viewing angles on this panel is just awful. This is a TN panel, so it's kind of expected. This is just one of those panels you're just gonna have to adjust to get a good picture. The AMD A10-8700P offers adequate performance for many of today's applications. This is a Carrizo chip with a base clock speed of 1.8 GHz and a turbo boost up to 3.2 GHz. This chip has the power to compete with the Intel Core i3 series but not the Core i5 series. The AMD Radeon R6 is an APU that offers good performance for the money. You can expect to play games like Diablo 3, CSGO, and Dota 2 on low settings. Here's a quick test of CSGO running on low settings at 1600 by 900. I'm getting around 25 to 30 frames per second but you can get better results at 1366 by 768. Our next test here is Skyrim running on medium settings at 1280 by 720. I was getting an average around 25 to 30 frames per second, but for better performance, switch it to low settings. The small shaped keys offer a good typing experience. The key travel is decent, and the overall feedback from these keys is great. The only complaint is the lack of a backlit keyboard, but for 380 bucks, you can't really complain. The trackpad is large and the surface feels solid. There's also a physical button that has been vastly improved over the Z51 series. The tracking is precise and on point, and the two-finger scrolling is smooth like butter. The only problem I had was the multi-touch can be choppy at times. Besides that, this is a solid Windows trackpad. This notebook features a 4-cell battery pack, and I've been highly disappointed with it. I've been getting around 2-3 hours on medium screen brightness, and that's with browsing the web and watching Netflix. For example, I was watching Netflix for about an hour, and the battery already drained to around 55%. So if you plan on taking this on the road, be sure not to forget that battery charger. To access the internal components, you have to remove all the surrounding screws and there's one more under this label. After that, you'll have access to your two DIMM slots for your RAM, wireless card, and your 2.5 inch hard drive. The one terabyte drive is painfully slow. So if you can, I'll recommend upgrading to a 2.5 inch SSD to improve the overall performance. The two bottom facing JBL speakers sound pretty good. The bass is a little on the weak side, but the mids and highs do a decent job. So let's get to the closing thoughts of the IdeaPad 500. With a base price of $429, you're getting some value here. You're getting a 15 inch Full HD panel, an AMD A10 Carrizo APU that offers a bang for your buck, 8 gigs of RAM which is a very good amount at this price point, and a design and build that feels pretty solid with the exception of the keyboard flex. The major con on this notebook is the short battery life. Keep in mind this is a big 15 inch notebook so I'll most likely spend this time at a desk. Alright guys, this is about rest of my full review on the IdeaPad 500. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to smash on that like button and don't forget to sub. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.